Bongiorno, everybody. So, here's a uh, recent order. We have quite a few goodies here. These are, of course, Rainbow Trout Bloodline Swim Baits in the four, oh, excuse me, in the four and the five inch. And I have some more up there. I think my phone's ringing, hold on. Oh, uh, gotta take this call real quick. All right, so where were we? So yeah, we have a bunch of uh, Rainbow Trout Bloodlines. We have some punch bugs here, some craws. This is a green pumpkin with a chartreuse pepper um, um, claw. Over here we have June Bug with pink. Some more Bloodlines. So this is neat. So this is a Rainbow Trout core shot. You'll see one side is a kind of a light watermelon with black and gold. The other side is a white pearl. And then you have the uh, pink core. So that is the same recipe as that, just in a core shot. And um, yeah, the cust this customer wanted some of those. And uh, you've seen this color before if you watch the channel. This is a uh, clear pepper bottom with like a uh, um, green pumpkin top and then a uh, gold line. Um, we have some of my custom swim bait over here, the old Boom Shad. Here it is in like a uh, gator color. Ugh, yuck. Blue and orange, orange and blue. But then the guy redeemed himself with some that look like Florida State colors, some garnet and gold with some glitter in it for flash. So, yeah, just wanted to show you guys a, uh, a custom order that I have been working on uh, this past week. All right, guys, so Christmas come early. Let's see what we have from the dead guys. Oh, yeah. Now, this is the regular worm blend of the new floating plastic. Boom da ba because in my last video where I did some of this, uh, where I was featuring the floating plastic, all I had was the uh, swim bait, which is awesome. But I was like, you know what, I need to get some worm and see how that stuff does, um, because that will be um, a little less uh, heavy and uh, should um, float better. And, uh, and then even softer, the finesse drop shot. So got a couple of gallons of plastic and some colors look at this all these colors here because the one thing I haven't um, tried everything yet uh, are, are the dead on colors I have not tried them all so yeah we have quite a few purple rain ooh that right there looks looks like morning dawn madness um, see what else do we have in here yeah some scents look at this coffee earthworm crawl fish food anise garlic let's see and there might be something else in here. Ugh. Yeah, here we go. And then smaller containers of the colorants. And guess what, y'all? These are going to be part of my 10,000 subscriber giveaway. So I'm going to be giving away um, some, some dead-on colorant samples, um, as well as a bunch of baits. And uh, in the... Uh, giveaway if and when we reach 10,000 subscribers um, so yeah some scents some colors some bigger colors and uh, <clears throat> and then some more of the uh, floating plastic so giddy 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 oh I'm excited and you know what I have not had any of the, I've, I've not tried any of their scents uh, I think I have some of their coffee scent um, that actually came with an order, one of my first orders that I placed with them. Um, you know, I just haven't used it yet, so stupid me. But uh, anyway, we're gonna uh, definitely get into some of this in some uh, near future videos. Um, but today we're making a bunch of worms, so we're going to uh, kind of get started on that. But be on the lookout for some great giveaway items. Um, really looking forward to hitting that 10,000. All right, so I've got four cups of uh, my dead on plastic worm blend because we're making ribbon tail worms and I'm doing a ira the guy wants an iridescent green pumpkin and he actually sent me a sample um, and the only reason I ever tried MF dark watermelon is because 
it gave me the color that this gentleman wanted. Um, so I'm actually doing his order, and this is the perfect see-through green pumpkin pigment that looks brown in certain lighting and then green in other certain lighting. So it, it kind of has a chameleon effect to it, um, and it's really see-through. So it doesn't really matter how much you put in there. You're going to be able to see through the bait. It has a really pretty uh, shine to it. It's, it's my favorite green watermelon, green pumpkin color of, of that type of color. Um, so anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to mix it in real good. And uh, you'll notice that I have out the cooking pot today. Um, because I have to make 100 worms, um, it's just more convenient to use a cooking pot. Um, I'll actually mix up a little more. Um, but we're just going to start with these four cups right there and uh, we're going to go ahead pour it into the pot just like that and it'll take about 20 minutes uh, to get that uh, completely gelled so it's been about three minutes and you can see that it's already kind of starting to turn colors so that's about two more cups. So that will give us about six cups of uh, plastisol. And uh, I don't have this turned up all the way. You know, you can see it's starting to kind of get, get a little jelly in there. Um, I don't have it turned up all the way. Um, I guess I could. Um, sorry if this camera's like angle's really bad. You can see back here you have a little temperature knob. I can turn it up to 400 and you know, it's real, real important to keep the lid on when you're trying to do the initial heat. Um, that keeps so much heat in there, it's unbelievable. So, um, and then what we'll do is we'll add our black flake and then we're ready to go. Unfortunately, I only have eight cavities of this worm, so I gotta do them, uh, I can't, I don't have eight fingers on one hand, but I have, I have to do them eight at a time. Um, but it goes quicker than you think, especially when you're not reheating and reheating and reheating and cutting up sprues and reheating um, this, you know your plastic is ready pretty much the whole time so um, anyway we're gonna let this uh, heat up and then we'll get back with you yeah and here's about seven or eight minutes in right here and uh, one thing I've noticed about the the new dead-on plastic is that it gets to the gel stage really quick um, so quick that a lot of times when guys take it out of the microwave it looks like it's ready to shoot but it hasn't actually completely kicked over yet. And so they wind up shooting baits uh, with plastisol that isn't completely kicked over. And, uh, and that's why they come out sticky and they don't set up. Um, Cause it's, it's so quick to gel and it's so clear that it'll, it'll, you'll, you'll be like, oh, it's ready and it's only 270 degrees. Um, so you definitely need to, um, when using the pot or the microwave, you know, make sure that, it, that you see 350 degrees at least once before you uh, actually shoot your baits. 350 right on the dot all right so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add a bunch of 0 0.035 black flake this is six cups of plastic and I, so I need three and a half half teaspoons so there's one half teaspoon two half teaspoon three half teaspoon and about a half that's about the ratio that I want all right Stir this, stir this back in a little more, and uh, you know that's a lot of flake to stir in. So I'm just gonna uh, get it nice and stirred in. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we're ready. So we're just gonna give this a quick stir. I'm gonna go ahead and draw up our plastic. And here we go. Gotta do this around the camera, but that's okay. All right, there's four worms, and there's four worms. All right, eight out of 100 done. Top those off slightly. This one doesn't require too much topping off. But you'll see we get a nice green pumpkin going there. So um, I went ahead and turned our plastic down a little bit. Um, once you kind of get it to the conversion temperature, you can bring your temperature down a little bit. So um, now I have this set at 350, which will keep the plastic about 335 on average. OK, 
Okay, without burning my hand, I'm gonna show you the first worms. Yeah. There we go. All right. Looking good. Take those out, put them in the bath. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to go fast. I don't want to have to sit here and just wait um, for them to like fully cure up in the mold before I take them out. So we're just going to uh, pop them out and go straight to the water and then we'll take them off the sprues at a later time. Now we're going to put these back up and keep going. Okay, here we go with the uh, next shoot. Okay, stir it up with the injector and over to the moles. I'm sure you guys have gotten the hang of this part by now, the actual injecting. <laughs> but if you're new, you just want to push very gently, almost letting the weight of your arm do the injecting. And uh, once you feel it stop, you're done. You don't want to push too much. Some molds, you need to um, hold a little pressure down there um, to you know make sure to really fill in uh, your mold, but um, or your cavities. But uh, yeah, you know, just slow and steady. Don't um, don't push too hard. You know, you you don't want an accident with hot plastic. Okay, here's the next mold. All right, and then this one right here. That's one of the great things about doing solid colors in the pot. You can just really knock them out. You know, even going eight at a time here, uh, much quicker than my usual uh, run, where I'm doing, you know, small quantities of some really intricate color. <laughs> you know, that takes a while to do, and it's easy to mess up and have to do your shoots over again. You know, this um, this is a little more forgiving than that, so. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and shoot up again. Shoot up, we got, we're not doing drugs here, people. We're not shooting up. Although, some people say that fishing is more addicting than drugs. And uh, having never tried drugs, I don't know, but fishing is very addictive. You know, I, I do enjoy my beer. I wouldn't say I'm addicted to it. I haven't drank uh, all week. But, um, yeah, this is quite an addiction. But, uh, anyway, don't really know how I got off on that. But, uh, going to let those set up and then on to the next one. Come on now. Boy, this mold really likes to, really likes to make it hard on me. All right. There are some more. And after a few runs going fast like this, those molds get hot because they're they're not really having time to cool down between between uh, runs which uh, which is good that means you're moving but uh, yeah they will get a little hot on you so anyway go ahead and dump those in and on to the next ones yeah so there's what we have so far nice little container of worms okay here's some more going to be a lot of rinse and repeat in this video. It's going to be shoot, demold, shoot, demold. But that's the uh, goal today is efficiency. And eventually you'll get a buildup of sprues and uh, injector plugs and leftovers. So what you can do is you can pop these in the microwave, remelt them, and, uh, and then pour them back into the pot and you can kind of keep circulating. Um, but the, the good thing about the pot is you know, you're you're remelting a lot less. You're not doing it every other time, and um, you know you only need to do it when you start filling this up. And, and if you're running low in your pot, you know there, you can always remelt what you have. Yeah. So here's what we have so far. Uh, I lost count, but that's okay. I'll wind up with more than a hundred of these, and that's the plan. Um, and then the rest of them I will sell, hopefully. But um, you know, this is I don't know 40 or so worms, and. Um, yeah, they're looking good. So we're gonna put them. Uh, oop, we're gonna put them back in the bath for right now and just kind of keep letting them set up. Hey guys, so um, we're actually gonna wind it down a little early. So I've gotten about 60 of them done. Uh, so I need 100. So um, not too much further to go. 
But uh, Julie's getting hungry, I'm getting a little hungry, and I have to still run to the store. Tonight we're doing some German food. So I'm making uh, Wiener Schnitzel with uh, red cabbage, Rotkohl, as they say in Germany, and then some potatoes to go with it. Um, and then, of course, I have to get beer. Uh, so we're going to have a little bit of a German night. But uh, as far as the baits go, um, this is about 60 of them. So, uh, yeah, I just need to take those off the sprue. So that plus that equals a ton of worms. Well, it ain't German, but it's good. German beer joint is a little too far, and I got to get back home, but uh, have some nice beer with uh, dinner tonight. Got the Wiener Schnitzels in the pan. Got a few more to do. We have our red cabbage in here. I don't know how well you can see that. But yeah, we're going to be eating good tonight. Hey, buddy. Say hello to everybody. Oh, yeah. Red cabbage. Let's 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 get a little bite of this. Mm. Nothing like German food and German beer. Well, this isn't German beer. I cheated. I got Yingling. So delish. Okay, so we are done. This is 100 of the uh, Green Pumpkin seven-inch ribbon tails. I call it the Candy Cane Junior. And here is three and a half bags worth of extras. Uh, so that's 28 worms right there. Um, so I'll be selling these off. So uh, my normal price for a bag, let's see, three bags would be uh, 15 bucks. So yeah, whoever's got 15 bucks that wants 28 of those worms uh, from the video, Email me, worldsworstfishing at gmail.com. First email I get uh, gets the worms. But uh, yeah, this is um, the order. A hundred of these. And uh, the guy fishes Lake Seminole a lot. And uh, absolutely loves a kind of see-through green pumpkin worm that looks brown and green at the same time. Um, it's a, the worm that he got this uh, whole concept from was a loose hummer hog worm which is a very old company. And uh, he sent me a sample. It was just one little worm that was kind of broken in half. And, uh, and it had this cool chameleon effect where it looked brown one second, green the next second. So if you were to take these out in the sunlight, man, it, it's spot on. They look brown in some light, green in another light. It's just gorgeous color. So MF Dark Watermelon, I love you guys at MF. Y'all are awesome. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, that's what we did. All right, everybody. A little bit different video today, but um, hopefully uh, it maybe shed a little light on how to use a Presto pot. If you guys want like a video on making a bunch of baits with the pots and kind of how to get the most out of your pots, I'll try to put something together. I, I actually have a lot of experience with the uh, Presto pots because that's, you know, when, when I started Land is the Limit, which by the way, everybody has stolen my logo. You'll probably see this little fish hook design all over the internet, all over other little fishing companies on Instagram and Facebook. They've all ripped me off. So if you see them, better say something. But uh, no, it, anyway, um, when I started Land is the Limit, it was, you know, relatively big production. We had distributorship deals. We were in stores. I was turning out several, several hundred baits a day. And... Um, yeah, it was a lot of Presto potting. So, um, anyway, that's going to wrap this video up. You know, nothing too crazy color-wise, technique-wise. I mean, that's about as basic as it gets, a green pumpkin worm. Um, but uh, I, don't, I don't do orders, you know, bulk orders of just one bait and one color very often. So, I don't, I don't get to use the pots much. So, I said, well, we'll do a little video slash blog on those worms and... Um, should be fun so anyway we're gonna wrap it up and uh we'll see you next time on the world's worst fishing please shoot me some comments down below don't forget to email me if you want to buy some of the uh leftover worms and um yeah thanks for tuning in